Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 418. Diseases or disorders that a woman would see a gynecologist for that impact her sexual experience. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to talk about all of the GYN diseases that your OBGYN treats and diagnoses. And I think it's very hard for somebody to say, I have this symptom, and be able to diagnose herself. So she has to come in and talk to her gynecologist and give them enough information so that they go in the proper direction in their exam and in their evaluation of of them when they're in the office, maybe ordering tests. You have to know what could be wrong for you to know what to tell your doctor, right? I mean, it's something like, I I can't just say, well, it hurts when I have sex. I mean, yes, she's gonna ask you some other questions about that, but it's much better to say, it hurts on the outside of my vagina when I have sex, and it hurts, it feels like pins, needles, and, and shearing pain as my husband enters. I mean, it's, that type of thing would say to, to your gynecologist, well, that might be vestibulitis or that might be um, vulvodynia. So that is more of a nerve uh, irritation, a hypersensitivity to anything that is touching their bottom. And so a lot of questions would then be directed toward that diagnosis if they go down the path of of asking you the questions and it's not that, then they will then go toward a different diagnosis of maybe do, they would ask you, does your vagina hurt after after you have sex? Does it feel like you just had sex with sandpaper? That would be more of a diagnosis of dry vagina, a vagina that doesn't have estrogen, doesn't have testosterone, isn't stretchy, and is literally rubbed off every time you have sex. So the, the illnesses that a gynecologist can diagnose are helped by your description. So the more right. descriptions you can give them, the better. So, so you're not expecting them to know the labels? No. Come in and say, I think I might have vaginismus. No. I, in fact, I don't think that that's, <clears throat> that would be appropriate anyway. Usually that's too hard to diagnose on no, yourself. No, but you, but you want them to have given some thought to how to describe what their experience is. Right. Where, where does it hurt? How does it hurt? Right. What does it feel like? What makes it worse? What makes it better? What you've tried to make it better? What positions you've tried that have made it either better or worse when you're having sex? Or if you've just stopped having sex? Those are all significant things to tell your doctor. Um, the thing, the diseases that, like our multiple choice question here, would be the, um, you could have a vaginal infection. So that can cause the pain. That's the easiest thing that we have to deal with. That's just antibiotics. And usually that can be diagnosed at the time of your visit. Well, and we were discussing uh, earlier the statistics for uh, sexually transmitted diseases. You're talking about mm-hmm. infections. Mm-hmm. Uh, are actually increasing in the aging population. Women 50 and older are now having more exposure to sexually transmitted diseases. They're having more of those diseases, and they're devastated when they find out what, what's wrong with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are some medical reasons why that is so. I mean, for one thing, most of those women grew up in an age where they didn't use protection to have sex. They didn't have condoms. They didn't use condoms. They didn't use condoms. Because they had the pill. <laughs> and, and they typically had a lifetime partner. But mm-hmm. now there are, you know, the divorce rate in people mm-hmm. over 60 has mm-hmm. skyrocketed. So there are a lot of single women out there having sex with people, mm-hmm. and it doesn't occur to them 
to use protection. Because they're not fertile anymore. So they're thinking I can't get pregnant. Condoms That'd be for the pregnancy, only reason for doing that. But yeah. really it's condoms to prevent infection. Yes. And uh, their age may have resulted in a thinning of the vaginal wall. If they're not taking uh, hormones. Lubrication may not be there. And they get tears, which mm -hmm. exposes them to greater risks of infections. So it, it's a perfect storm in some cases for an mm -hmm. older woman. Yeah, it is. And, and that's so the infections are something that's usually the easiest thing to treat if it's not HIV, of course. Right. And it's the, and the, it's the most obvious when a gynecologist looks in the vagina, usually there's a discharge or a smell or a redness, and you can tell that there's some kind of infection going on there. So that's one thing. So in the multiple choice uh, questions of what gynecologically can cause painful intercourse, the um, vulvodynia is rare, but it is something that it happens we think because of recurrent infections that, that overstimulate the nerves around the vagina. So, you mean like UTIs? Could be UTIs. It could be vaginal infections over a lifetime that make the, the nerves very sensitive, hypersensitive. Okay. Right. And then you have to use medication to decrease that kind of uh, super sensitivity because it doesn't feel good. It feels bad. It's not a good sensitivity. Okay. So that's, and that's rather hard to treat. Usually there's a specialist for vulvodynia. Um, endometriosis is something that's very common. It means that there are little implants of tissue on the inside of the abdomen when you are having cycles. It's usually before you turn 50. While you're still cycling, these little implants bleed inside your abdomen every month when you're having a period, and they leave scar tissue. That scar tissue can bother you the rest of your life. It can cause you to have pain when you have intercourse. Usually it's deep pain. So when um, the penis hits the cervix and pushes the uterus up, that actually causes a kind of a pulling and a shearing pain. And that's something that should be dealt with surgically. Usually you have to take down the adhesions, and that can be done with a laparoscope. But, uh, but and there's very few other treatments for it. So that's a, a treatment that happens in the abdomen, not in the vagina? Yeah, it's in the abdomen. It's when you, endometriosis is really tissue that should be inside the uterus and bleeds out every month with a period. Instead, it's in the wrong place. It's inside your abdomen, around your bowels, and, and on the outside of the bowel. And that causes, your, your body tries to protect itself by making scar tissue. So that occurs while you're cycling. It gets worse and worse while you're cycling. Some people have hysterectomies for it. And that makes it more painful to have sex? And it makes it more painful to have sex when you have the implants and you're cycling. But it can also cause you to have pain when you're in menopause from all the scar tissue that developed. Right. And so that's something that would have to be taken care of by um, a scar or adhesiolysis, a removal of scar. Okay. So that's a, that's a gynecologic diagnosis, something your doctor would know very a lot about and how to take care of it. So uh, another one of these gynecological issues is a prolapse. I don't know what that is. Okay, so prolapse is when a, um, a woman has had uh, several children, vaginally usually. They um, The uterus kind of sits in a hammock kind of... Um, it has... Women have a defect or an opening in the bottom of their pelvis so the babies can come through. But the uterus is what houses the baby. So when you're not pregnant and you've been pregnant, those ligaments that are holding the uterus up, Stretch out. they get really stretched. So the uterus can actually fall out of your vagina. Oh, wow. And, and it makes it very um, mobile. So somebody who has uh, prolapse, when they have intercourse, those ligaments are longer. They, you can go from literally pushing the vagina from outside the um, vaginal opening to all the way into the uh, abdomen, depending on how big the man is, and, real, and putting pressure on other organs by pushing this uterus up and down. It hurts. So that's something that we often used to do hysterectomies for. We s sometimes still do. We sometimes just suspend 
the uterus and shorten those ligaments, mm. but that in itself can cause pain mm -hmm. because then the, it's pre, it's very tight. <coughs> so when the penis hits it, it doesn't move enough. Right. So even the surgery itself for the prolapse can, can fix cause the prolapse, pain. but it can lead to other issues. Right. So it can and that can cause pain. So that's another reason you would see the gynecologist to make sure your pain is not from something like that. The other issue is um, fibroids of the uterus. Fibroids are benign muscle masses that grow when we have a, a lot of estrogen and progesterone when we're in our 40s. And it can get, I mean, you can get a uterus that big. I mean, seriously, it can, it can make your, distend your abdomen and, and it's not cancer. It just fills up your pelvis and makes you look pregnant. And that... So it's these fibroid growths, it, you're not, it's not babies growing. It's just, uh, pregnant, just muscles, you, muscle tumors that are benign, and they just fill up your pelvis, fill up your abdomen. They, they can get very large. So when you have intercourse, that it's, it's like no hitting, yeah. there's no room. It's like yeah. hitting a rock because it fills, they can fill down down the vagina too and make the vagina so very short. does that hurt short. you or your partner or both? both? It can hurt both. Both, okay. But mostly, I mean, I would say more acutely, the woman. More acutely, the woman. Yes, of course. So, so that's another thing. That's easy for a gynecologist to feel. They, we just do a bimanual exam. We glove fingers in the vagina and an ab, hand on the abdomen, and you can feel them. But we get more specific by doing an ultrasound to to see that kind of problem. Right. So that's another issue that can cause painful intercourse. That's treated when it's they're very large. That's treated by um, a hysterectomy. I mean, usually that's the only thing that's going to make that any better. Because you can't just go in and cut out all those little growths. You don't, you don't have a uterus left after that. Yeah. Usually there's, unless there's just one fibroid, you can remove just one fibroid if it's in the proper place, if it's <laughs> If it's perfect, accessible. If yeah. it's accessible. All things being equal, yeah. But, but oftentimes for fibroids, that's one of the most common reasons for hysterectomy. So what about a pelvic floor disorder? What is that? Well, the... The pelvic floor disorder is a lot like the, the uh, prolapse. Basically, everything falls down. The, um, the urethra where you urinate from, the vagina and the rectum are all together, and they can all kind of fall down. And then when you have intercourse, it, everything pushes up, up and down, and you can trap the bladder in between the vagina and the pubic bone. That hurts. You can trap the, uh, the rectum. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to display it my hurts. ignorance here. Is this something that I, I've heard a phrase and I don't know exactly what it means? Kegel exercises? Yeah, well, Kegel exercises are great if you're young, you've got lots of hormones, and you don't have a lot of of this pelvic floor disorder. But if it's if but, but that's what's associated with it, the pelvic floor right, disorder. Okay, right. That's, that's that's what we we ask you to do to try to build up those muscles. Yeah, to hold everything back. The pelvic floor holds everything up into your abdomen, but when it gets lax right. from childbearing usually, it, it's just like the prolapsed uterus. Everything falls down, the bladder, the rectum, and the uterus. Okay. And sometimes the vagina. So it's something that it has to be surgically fixed. So all, all the things so far you've been mentioning are surgical except yeah. for the infections. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, and the vestibulitis. So if there's what would be a, a medical thing that didn't require surgery, and what drugs would you be looking at for those things? So um, the atrophy or thinning of the vagina, which we used to call old lady old lady vagina, because somebody who's old er now I'm older, older without hormones, without estrogen and testosterone. Uh, the vagina shrinks. It physically shrinks down to like the size of maybe a thick pen. I mean, so the vagina shrinks, it gets dry. And if you try to have intercourse, even with, um, even with uh, uh, lubrication, a, a normal penis won't fit in there. Yeah. And it won't stretch. It will tear. And that hurts. Oh, yeah. So that's something that requires hormonal treatment, either hormonal treatment on the vagina, in the vagina, or hormonal treatment for the whole body, like what we do with the with pellets. The pellets. So we give estrogen and testosterone, and those two hormones make the vagina normal size again and make it stretch normally. So it, it can recover. It can recover. Okay. Now, I unfortunately, just this is just an FYI, women who have 
um, who are on birth control pills, the very low-dose birth control pills that the FDA loves, gives us almost no estrogen and almost no progesterone, and it shuts down our testosterone. So I used to see, when I did GYN, a lot of young women with old lady bottom. I mean, they're, they couldn't have sex because their vagina was so small and dry that the pill caused that. Now, I used to take them off the pill because it usually shut down their need, their want to have sex. It shut down their testosterone as well. So I would take them off the pill and then put in a, a Mirena IUD just to give them birth control. Right. If they, you know, if they were married or if they had a, a, a partner that uh, was a steady partner and they didn't have to use protection anymore from infections. So that would be my answer to that. But women need to know that if, at an early age, you can have old lady bottom even when you're, you're young and on the pill. And that's, that's another reason to have sexual pain, but even at a young age. Are there other medicines that you consider as a gynecologist when you're looking at uh, uh, painful sex or lack of desire besides hormones? Yeah, there are, there are a lot of um, antihypertensives and... Um, and <clears throat> antidepressant. Antidepression. I mean, uh, well, if, if they're on those medicines, they may have these issues. Right. Antidepressants take away. So your sometimes it's taking away desire. Medicines. Yes. So most antidepressants decrease sexual desire, so your libido goes away. Well, they, they do on women. They actually decrease the man's ability to have an orgasm. That's true. So he can want sex, and it can be both on women. It, yes, it can, and it can be both on men. But classically. Women experience less desire, mm -hmm. less easily aroused, and men experience less completion. Well, and women as well. So antidepressants, then also the cardiovascular drugs, the blood pressure drugs. We look, we look for those. Some, some of the anticonvulsants that we use for mood modulation, but also for seizures, mm -hmm. those can actually decrease the ability to have sex or want to have sex. That's also a desire issue. Yes. Uh, the anti-estrogens, some, some of the anti-estrogens that um, are used, there's something called flutamide and some of the, um, and some of the diuretics can actually dry the vagina. So, um, so you, as a physician, then you need to know all the things that... I need to look down the med, yeah. med list to make sure that I'm not um, trying to fix something that could be fixed by using a different kind of medicine. That's very important. Or as a specialist treating for a particular problem, you're not necessarily going to be focused on their hypertension issues. No, and I'm not going to change their hypertension issue, their hypertension. No, but, you may, but I may be able to get their other their doctor who exactly. does take care of that yeah. to change to an antihypertensive that doesn't suppress the uh, libido. Which comes back to the whole team approach thing of, right. of doctors talking to each other to say, right. okay, I'm more concerned that she's going to have a heart attack than that she's going to be happy sexually. Right. And you're going to say, well, it's possible that she could do both, uh, mm -hmm. not be at risk for the With heart a attack. a different drug. And be, yeah, because are you aware of this drug mm -hmm. or have you considered this? And then you guys have a professional conversation about, well, yeah, I discounted that for this reason. You know, and try well, to find an answer. Most of the time they're on something that's very cheap. And cheap is good. But if, if it cheap, works, if, if it's cheap what you takes need. away your sex drive yeah. and ruins your relationship at home, that's not good because yeah. that's really expensive in the end. Yeah, and so we want people to know that these could be complications that are impacting their lives. And if they are, then you need to have a discussion with your doctor. Is mm -hmm. it possible that these medicines could be doing it? Mm -hmm. And the doctor then needs to discuss with you or your other physicians how can we find the right answer as a team mm -hmm. for what's impacting this female. That's true. That's true. And then you need to know that the first step in any kind of physical sexual dysfunction is to, to see your gynecologist and to have a physical exam. Yes. And, and so medically, there could be a physiological problem for the distress that you're experiencing. You start with a gynecologist. You may then move on to an endocrinologist. Or a hormone specialist, or a hormone who's specialist. a gynecologist like I am. And you try to get the medical answer first. Then you go for counseling and approach the psychological, emotional, relational issues, mm -hmm. having the medical piece in hand as best right. you can. I think that's the best plan. I would agree. If, that were, if I were having that issue, that's what I would do. Yeah. 
And, and it's what I would recommend if someone came in. We right. need to go here first, then let's talk once we find out what we're looking at. Absolutely. So All we'll right. have the lists of the different drugs that impact female sexuality as well as the different medical conditions that can impact your uh, your sexuality and your sexual response. It'll be posted on the blog that accompanies the video, or and you'll we'll put it up on the slide as as we're as you're watching this. So as always, thank you for listening. Yes, thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance Healthcast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.